That's all this Wednesday lunchtime from the 1 o'clock news. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, it's Wednesday lunchtime and time to take our first look at what the weekend holds in store. But be before we do that, let's uh, go backwards in time, 75 years, back to black and white, and take a look at uh, what the country was experiencing weather-wise on this day. Now, fairly keen northeasterly winds blowing across the country, temperatures between about 38 and 46 Fahrenheit, which is very roughly 5 to 10 Celsius, so there was quite a, a nip in the air with the uh, best of any brightness, any sunshine on the western side of the country. Well, it's a little bit warmer than that to today, 75 years later. Temperatures in southern Britain probably getting up to around about 13 or 14 Celsius this afternoon. And that northeasterly wind that has been troubling us over the last few days is a little bit lighter today. And the other thing that's rather nice is the fact that we've got blue skies in many areas, so it won't feel quite as cold as it has done earlier in the week. Now there is some cloud around, still some cloud clinging across the southwest, giving a few spots of rain there. And this cloud which is drifting down these North Sea coasts is likely to bring a few spots of rain every now and again. Uh, some of that rain eventually just grazing northeastern parts of England. But for most of us, I think a fine day, lots of sunshine to enjoy those autumn colours. Now tonight we'll continue to see some cloud feeding down these North Sea coasts, but uh, a central part staying clear and a widespread frost down the spine of the country once again. There could well be some mist and fog around that'll take a wee while to clear away. Those are general guide to temperatures, so no doubt in one or two places temperatures probably will drop to two or three degrees below freezing, but they will hold up pretty well around the coast. Now we've got high pressure up to the north of us, a little ridge pushing down across the United Kingdom. High pressure will stay in control during Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. With uh, these weather fronts just running down the North Sea, bringing a little bit of cloud and rain every now and again. But the high pressure really is in control, and I think over the next few nights we're going to see more in the way of frost and fog around. It might well take a wee bit longer to clear out of the way. Perhaps some thicker cloud just drifting away from East Anglia tomorrow. At last some brightness getting into the West Country, and then on Friday a similar sort of picture really, but as I said before, the frost and fog lingering a wee bit longer. Saturday and Sunday, very little changes apart from some cloud and a few showers perhaps getting into northeastern areas, but that only a 40% chance. Now the weather show at 1.40 continues to travel around the country, celebrating 75 years of the BBC in Scotland with raincoats today. Join us at these new times for mornings on BBC One. You will be there. <laughs> what is it, Anne? Uh, I don't really know. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a challenge. What am I supposed to do with the rocket shovel? <laughs> I've got two arms, I don't care. It's a really useful guide to life in the 90s. It's brilliant. And it's the key to the real rooms of your dreams. No peeking under the door until the room's finished. Promise? Promise. I'd like them to come in and see wow. Um, it's fantastic. Oh, wow. Say so you'll be there at these new times weekday mornings from Monday on BBC One. I think it would be a great way to relieve frustration. Attractive professional male. I think your legs are fabulous. With a good sense of humor. Are you any good in bed? What's the old fool babbling on about? <laughs> Attentive listener. I married him, I slept with him, and when I had enough, I leave. Taxi! Is he evil, really? What? The books that you write, quite frankly. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, my lady was my old pal. Must have made you, Des. Seeking to recapture his youth in the Wogan years. Beginning Friday at 10.20 on BBC One. Wow. This is BBC One for the Midlands. Now, Midlands Today. A crackdown on burglars, but is it too little, too late? And Home Rule for the Midlands, the campaign for devolution. Good afternoon. A neighbourhood watch coordinator says he's giving up the fight against crime because the police are outnumbered and he fears he'll be killed by thugs on his estate. His resignation comes as police and local councils begin a new initiative to combat burglaries. 
Operation Strike Back is based on two previous campaigns which helped to target car crime and street muggings. These are just some of the 123 homes broken into every day. 85,000 break-ins last year alone. At the back of the news conference sat 81-year-old Elsie Fletcher. She faced a burglar just a month ago. I came to and he, was, he flashed a torch in my face and absolutely, I was just terrified. Operation Strike Back has the backing of all seven councils in the West Midlands. But today, a neighbourhood watch coordinator in Birmingham resigned, saying he felt let down by the police. It's all right for the politicians and, and, and these top police officers saying, look, you know, we will do this, we will get one of these jobs and, and louts off the streets. You know, a, a blanket operation, the curfews, and all that. but where, where's the police force? Where, where, where is their manpower? If, if the police are honest, they will actually admit they haven't got the manpower to see this operation through. Overwhelmingly, people tell me that they want to see police officers about on the streets. We're starting to do that. The trick for me is making sure that we've got enough resources left to respond to the urgent calls. That's a balance. I think we're getting it right, but occasionally we slip up. I think we may have slipped up there, but we're looking at it. Operation Strike Bank begins in November. The police and the local councils say they need the public's help to make it a success. Peter Wilson, Midlands Today, Birmingham. A Birmingham woman suffering from anorexia has lost her fight for life three years after her identical twin also died from the disease. Samantha Kendall, who was 30, had fought the slimming disease for 18 years. She weighed less than five stones when she died. Her sister Michaela died in April 1994. A 23-year-old man has appeared in court charged with the abduction and rape of a woman from Leicestershire. Richard Holt from Shepshed in Leicestershire is also accused of robbery and false imprisonment. He's been remanded in custody. The woman was abducted from Loughborough early on Saturday morning and was found locked in her car boot on farmland in Leicestershire. Parents and teachers have been warned to be vigilant after the attempted abduction of a girl from a school at Leek in Staffordshire. The police say a man grabbed the eight-year-old girl in the playground of St Mary's School, but she managed to get away. The director of one of the region's most respected hospitals claims his staff are having to work in conditions that are hardly fit for human habitation. The Midlands Centre for Spinal Injuries is trying to raise three million pounds to pay for a new unit. His first step since a car accident left him paralysed in June. Chris Ellis is one of the success stories of the Midlands Centre for Spinal Injuries, but his surroundings haven't helped in his recovery. In old Nissan-style huts, the wards are open and men and women share the same space with only a curtain for privacy. Most people want and need privacy at least for periods of time during their treatment. So privacy is very important for all of us individuals, but especially the uh, individual with spinal injuries. The roof leaks and staff have only one domestic washing machine to cope with 45 patients. They say patient care isn't affected, but they need a new unit. The NHS can't pay and so it'll be left to fundraising and charities. Carol Foster, Midlands Today, Oswestry. Aston Villa and a thousand of their fans returned from Spain this morning with their reputations intact. Villa drew nil-nil with Athletic Bilbao in the UEFA Cup to give them a great chance of making the third round. And there were no reported problems with their fans either. A night when fans of both sides showed how to behave and enjoy the occasion. In the streets around the Athletic Bilbao ground, it was all noise, colour and exuberance. Villa might have taken the lead, but Dwight York missed horribly in the first half. Villa defended magnificently for the rest of the game, their most dangerous moment when Larathabau's shot was pushed onto the post by Bosnich. In the end, though, it was mission accomplished. We would have settled for this before, we, before the game started, and, and, and in that respect, it's, it's good, and we're pleased with, with everybody's performance effort, especially when they had the ball, um, and it gives us something to go for next time round. The fans enjoyed it too. They swapped shirts, drank together and proved that English fans abroad can behave. We'd like to say to the Spanish people, thank you so much for your hospitality. A long hot night ended in the wee small hours as Villa's European campaign grew stronger. Steve Lee, Midlands Today, Bilbao. 
Scotland's getting it and so are the Welsh, so why not more independence for the Midlands? That's what a new campaign group is asking. Home rule for the Midlands may be some way off, but the Mercia movement, which was launched today, is already planning for it. At this ordinary looking house in Stourbridge, the Midlands Revolution is being plotted. Inside, one of the leaders of the rebels, 77-year-old retired school teacher Joyce Millington. It sounds far-fetched, but in fact the Mercia movement has just published a book outlining its plans for at least some form of independence for the Midlands, based on the ancient kingdom of Mercia ruled by King Offa. The aims are really to try to get government or power, shall we say, to come from the bottom upwards rather from the top downwards. And the general basis is that we think that in Anglo-Saxon times that was how it was. If the Midlands does ever get independence, then maybe the black country rebels who founded the movement would like to see their new leader sworn in here at Dudley Castle. Maybe even a king or queen of Mercia enthroned at the castle. King Offa would have been proud of them. Andy Newman, Mercia Today, I mean Midlands Today, Dudley. <laughs> Time for a look at the weather now is Sally. Thanks. It's been another cold start today. Many places stayed at zero until nine this morning. Looking up now though, lovely blue skies again with a fair amount of sunshine. Staying dry too, with temperatures up to 11 Celsius this afternoon. Won't stay completely clear all day as a bit of patchy cloud comes in from the east later, which means tonight this area won't be quite as cold as last night with temperatures dipping to around two, but more western parts where it's clear it could drop to zero again. So expect a touch of ground frost again, more especially in the western region and possibly a bit of mist too. Tomorrow lightish winds again, bit of patchy cloud hanging around, but the sun will still be with us and temperatures up to 10, so bright but chilly. That's it. Thanks, Sally. And that's just about it for now. Later in Midlands today, we'll be reporting on a revolutionary new fishing jacket. We'll be here with Nick Owen, so join us if you can. But now from Sally and me, good afternoon. <laughs> Mary Nevin has multiple sclerosis and can barely talk. So although her hands speak for her, she has no voice in an English court. Is this dumb justice? Watch Midlands Report at 7.30 on BBC Two tomorrow. Today, the BBC brings you EastEnders to the Archers, but what was it like at the start? If any young woman arrived without stockings, she was sent home. Presenters became heartthrobs. Quite a lot of the girls were keen on Henry Hall. And war reporting changed attitudes. News, news, news. There's an insatiable demand for news. And as for television... They couldn't think that it had any future. 75 Years Auntie the Inside Story starts Tuesday at 10 on BBC One. The new Radio Times includes features on forthcoming BBC programmes together with complete listings for all television and major satellite channels. Face Value, the programme that gets under the skin of the fashion and beauty industry, is back for a new series. Animal testing is out, human testing is in. We meet the women who are paid to be human guinea pigs for the cosmetics industry. From the catwalk to the high street, some of the biggest names in fashion are designing for department stores, but are they just cashing in? And should talcum powder carry a health warning? That's Face Value tonight at 7 on BBC One. Neighbours in five minutes here on BBC One. First, the weather show from Glasgow. To celebrate the BBC's 75th anniversary, today's weather show comes to you from Glasgow, where the first Scottish forecast was broadcast way back in 1923. Glasgow is the first stop for low pressure systems coming in from the Atlantic, and they bring with them almost 40 inches of rain a year. Maybe that's why waterproof clothing has always been such a big hit here. Today's high-tech fabrics are very practical, but what I would like is something, well, a wee bit stylish. Ten miles up the road in Cumbernauld, I found what I was looking for. 
We're the Scotland's only manufacturers of genuine Macintoshes. The term Macintosh has really entered our vocabulary, but what's the difference between this sort of coat and any raincoat? This coat is a genuine Macintosh which has been made by hand by craftsmen made from rubberized fabric, which is the way Charles Macintosh developed it 175 years ago. By spreading rubber on, in this case, cotton, and then we make it into a sandwich by having two layers of cotton and a layer of rubber in between, okay. so it's totally waterproof. The first time we actually see it in this factory, it has already been coated with the rubber. We can then cut it out individually using cardboard patterns. The coats then are given to coat makers, and these men make the garment through. They begin by sticking the coat together using what we call rubber solution, and they, they have this on their fingers. Yeah, you can smell it. They are then confirmed on the sewing machine. And then the men get the coats back and they put tape over the stitch holes. The man makes the coat right through from the beginning to the end. So that he takes a bundle of 16 pieces and ends up with 16 finished coats. So he gets the job satisfaction of knowing at the end of the day that the coat is his and we have the quality control. You see, you can see then that the tape has been put on here, round the armhole, down the side seam. The pocket has been stuck on, then stitched, mm -hmm. and then taped on the back. Mm -hmm. All this kind of work, the hemming on the front, mm -hmm. is all done by the coat maker doing this by hand. Mm -hmm. We have an in-house design department here, so we are able to take the designs of some of the very famous fashion houses, mm -hmm. and we are able to interpret their designs and make a Macintosh to their own style. We are now definitely the world leaders, albeit we're a very small factory in Scotland. It used to be a case of everybody remembers a granny and a Macintosh, but that's no, no longer the case. The designers have picked it up and they've actually changed the whole look, lots of colours, lots of new ideas, lots of innovation, so I think it's changed. Women do want bright colours. If it's a wet day, definitely. let's at least oh, be, be, be bright. We have the classic colours, like red here. Right. This has very much been a traditional yeah. Macintosh colour. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'd like okay. to try this yeah, one. Yeah, I'll flip into that one, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Red, and oh, we've got mirror and everything yeah. here. Yeah. Red Single breasted with cr patch pockets yeah. and two side vents. Very much a traditional jacket. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very popular in Japan. I like the colour actually. These are our major markets just now. We say Japan is probably number one, followed by France. Then we have UK, then it's indirect exports. Then we're on to various countries throughout the world, whether it be some in Belgium, Holland, all the way. Yeah. We're, we're fairly widely spread. But not necessarily very wet country. No, it's a fashion statement. People want to use it as a fashion gamut as opposed to a link coat. These are the, the new colours for, for spring summer 98. Oh, sky, sky blue. Yeah, blue. that's sky blue. How appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> this I is one like of the new styles we've done yeah. as a double breasted yeah. with an inch. Just now we're actually working with many designers, all the way from, uh, I suppose, Jigsaw, who's more of a, a high street label, all the way up to Hermes and Gucci and Ralph Lauren, where people are actually giving us their designs, we interpret them into the Macintosh fabrics and there we have a, a new fashionable Macintosh. Yeah. Th th this is a, a prototype that we've brought out this year. I recognise that label. <laughs> <laughs> a Hermes coat, here we go. Again, quite, quite nice colour. Oh gosh, and on the button, yeah. Hermes Paris. Down to the nitty gritty now. How much do these coats cost? It depends, and again, depending on labels and things. A Mac can cost you anything from £220 up to £600. But it's raining. Raining in my. This is a swing coat with a high button front. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's original, it's a classic, it's a combination of the rubberized cotton, which people quite like, it's the, the, the cut and the way the fabric moves, and if you have that with a marriage of colours, then it seems to be the ideal fabric for designers to work with. But it's raining, raining in my heart. Yeah, this, this is what a Macintosh is all about, really, and isn't it? It keeps you dry. It will keep me dry. And yet very fashionable. And I like the colour. It's me. <laughs> Orange. Very nice. OK, then, well, that's me. I'm ready for anything now. I just, um, I just need the rain. Oh, cause it's raining. Raining in my heart. Raining in my heart. In my heart. Let's
Ladies and gentlemen, your time starts the new. Here's the kickoff. What a game is going to be. Just look at that footwork. The manager's talking tactics. Get off, Blakey. Get off. He's told them to keep the ball under control. What's this? Davidson arguing with the ref. Six points up. Are you mad? Bristol Rovers fighting back. This has got the ball. He's going to shoot. Oh, yes. What a save by David Seaman. They think it's all over. But it isn't. Jim Davidson's Generation Game kicks off this Saturday at 6 on BBC One. Now that's magic. A gorgeous morning. The American desert, the world's media. The thrust car is about to crash through the speed of sound. And tomorrow's world was there, behind the scenes, bringing you an exclusive glimpse of this record-breaking achievement. Life in the Fast Lane, tonight at 7.30 on BBC One. Another case for Coroner Quincy in 25 minutes here on BBC One. After Neighbours. Neighbours, everybody needs good neighbours with a little understanding. You can find the perfect blend. Now, mate, I hope you realise this is on me. <laughs> <laughs>